variety of skills and the manpower to make them effective. At the moment, there are 4,000 men working on the site. Soon, the construction force will be nearly 6,000. We have buses, quite a big fleet of buses, running from Lincoln, Grimsby, Cleethorpes, Doncaster, all around the whole of North Lincolnshire. And then, of course, we've got the Labour Camp, our own following. And, of course, all our own staff men came with us. We've got quite a housing problem for the staff, of course. The contractors are making every effort to complete the building stage on time. Many are ahead of schedule, but there's a long way to go yet. The construction industry has had its share of industrial disputes in the past. What steps are being taken to stop them happening again? We have placed a uh, particular emphasis on the standard of uh, welfare amenities that are being provided, for example, the quality of the Anchor Village that can accommodate a thousand people is very much better than one would normally associate with the construction industry. You know, the days of the Nissen huts have gone. Anchor Village is almost entirely self-contained. It has its own post office, its own pub, even its own priest. It is a working community, but a temporary one. But what about the manpower to operate the new steel plant when it's built? The principal activity at this stage is identifying the manpower requirements, both in terms of total numbers and in terms of particular jobs that the new plant and the new management organization is going to require. Uh, that sort of activity is now very well progressed. And we're now moving on to the next stage of identifying, A, how we're going to select the people we want for the future, and how we're going to train them to uh, make them capable of taking over the new jobs we have to offer. I think the most worrying question it's come to up at the present moment as far as the production workers is concerned is that is there any knowledge in any way, shape or form of the numbers of jobs that will be required both for the LD plant and for the mills and the concasting plant? Yes, uh, these numbers are available to us. There was made available uh, several months ago at the Anchor meeting, Harry. And the, believe me, they have gone into some detail in these. The only figures that we haven't got, of course, as yet, are for staff personnel. And uh, this, is, this has been the subject of discussion at recent meetings. I think and I would add, Mr Chairman, ancillary workers as well. I don't think there's any numbers for ancillary workers. Well, we've got the numbers that's going to be required for Anchor. We have not yet got them in the detail as to so many melters, so many second hands, so many roller sufflers and so on like this. So that while we have the numbers, these will still be subject to negotiation. Is this point uh, agreed by management, Mr Chairman, that these numbers are subject to negotiation? Or are they thinking that uh, at the moment uh, theirs is a, an arbitrary, arbitrary decision on the numbers? Well, two points arise from that, Fred. One, we would not allow management to unilaterally decide the money. The money. And secondly, I'm quite certain it's the last thing they would ask for, that they will sit down and discuss this with us. And in all the experience that we have had in remanning plant, we've had no difficulty whatsoever in getting management to sit down and discuss individual manning of a department or a unit with us. Union and management are in step over the question of manning the new plant. But the most immediate problem is to get that plant built. This is the Bloom and Billet Mill. When completed, it'll be four-fifths of a mile long. You mean it's slipped over? You really think it's slipped? You couldn't conceivably be an error and have been put it in the wrong place. Well, it was surveyed in after direction. One of the project managers chairs a meeting of contractors. By WSA? Um, what about m and I've asked for the drawing from Atkins. It hasn't been supplied yet. But um, this error, which is of the order 50 to 60... Meetings like this are held regularly to monitor progress and deal with any problems that might endanger the very tight finishing schedule. Yeah, but I'm not interested in how you deal with it. I'm interested in how it comes to be... 60 millimetres out of line, whether in fact it slipped and whether it was put in wrong. 
I mean, what would cause it to slip? It's just a lump of bloody concrete. It was, it was constructed on the men here represent large civil engineering companies which have competed for and won contracts to build anchor. The tie so beam wasn't the tie beam. So that's the and, there, and, there's, and there's been further piles put around it. They tend to be based in different areas so that the industrial effort required for the project is spread throughout the country. The work is split between 42 main contractors. They in turn contract other firms to help them. There are few industrial areas in the country not making some contribution to anchor. At Rugby, for instance, the town of railways and electronics, much of the electrical plant is being manufactured. This includes control systems and main motors for the Bloom and Billet Mill. At Workington, where the Lake District meets the sea, they're constructing 250-ton torpedo ladle cars to carry hot metal and casting 8-ton ingot moulds to form the molten steel that Anchor will produce. In Kids Grove, at the foot of the Pennines, the coal mines have gone and the computer industry has moved in. The process control equipment being tested here will give Anchor one of the most sophisticated rolling mills in the world. Finally, amongst many others, Stockton on Tees. Here they're assembling vast basic oxygen vessels that will form the heart of the new steel plant. Already the first items of plant from all over the country are beginning to arrive at Scunthorpe. This beam is for one of the many cranes, one of the smaller ones. On the site itself, the building is coming along well. Well, we're driving along the eastern perimeter road, due south. Immediately in front of us is the basic oxygen steel plant, which, when commissioned, will produce four and a half million tons of liquid steel per annum. The basic oxygen plant is the steel making unit, which is going to produce continuously cast slabs for our plate mills and ingots for our new bloom billet mill. It will, of course, be the largest plant in the United Kingdom and it contains many special technical features with regard to hot metal, scrap handling, gas cleaning facilities and many others. And we have searched the world looking at the newest techniques to gain experience. And we believe that we have now designed and are building one of the finest steel plants in the world. The anchor scheme will rely on local ironstone in much the same way as the existing plants. What then makes it so different? Scunthorpe stands on an iron ore field, but the iron ore is low grade. And for our purposes, we found the answer was to import rich iron ore from abroad and blend it with the local ironstone. And by so doing, our blast furnaces will produce substantially more iron, and we can use that iron to support a larger steelmaking operation. High-grade ore from Sweden, Canada, Brazil and West Africa will be shipped to Lincolnshire. It will arrive in 100,000 ton ore carriers at a new jetty on the Humber at Immingham. Two giant unloaders with 20 ton grabs will discharge the carriers at a rate of 4,000 tons per hour onto a conveyor belt and straight to the stock beds. Then 23 miles inland to Scunthorpe by rail, travelling in specially designed 100-ton hopper wagons. 
the ore arrives at anchor and is blended with local ore. The new mix then goes to the two existing ironworks at Redbourne and Appleby Frodingham. The iron from these existing plants is then returned to anchor for converting into steel, rolling and finishing. Anchor, then, is an ingenious and economical way of increasing steel production dramatically. I believe that uh, the Anchor scheme will secure Scunthorpe's future. Without it, we could not have remained uh, a major steelmaking centre in a highly competitive world. And so Anchor gives us an opportunity of uh, holding uh, a strong position as a low-cost steelmaker, and the people of Scunthorpe who are engaged in steel will have a long-term future. Well, lots of men are worried whether they're going to have a job on anchor or whether they're going to go up the road. Uh, my feeling is personally that uh, I think most of them will be employed somewhere in the division. Maybe not at Scumdorf, or it, it, it could be, we say, somewhere else. But, uh, another still works belonging to the BSC. What do you think of Anchor? Well, as I say, you, you can't stop progress. I mean, it should be a good thing. If it does come where uh, we don't get a job down on Anchor, and I'm not offered a, you know, a job that I think suitable, like, then uh, I should probably emigrate to Australia, somewhere like that. Nowadays in Britain nobody starves, so, you know, if you don't get a job there, you get a job somewhere else. What do you think of Anchor as a project? Stinks. Why? Yeah. Oh, I think it's taking it all the way up from Lampy Park. It's what they're all, all the job, all the uh, LD was at Lampy Park for a start. Well, I spent all their millions at Lampy uh, Prodigum. I think it stinks. What do you think of Anchor? Well, I think it should be a good thing when you get it going, isn't it? Because, uh, well, I mean, a bit modern equipment and plenty of production, that's all they want, isn't it? I don't work on the steelworks or anything like that, but I would say it is very important to, uh, to Scunthorpe as a whole and the area. How do you see it? Do you think it's going to be make Scunthorpe a better place to live in? Well, the steelworks surely will be, be an improvement, won't it? I mean, all the old parts are coming down, and they're hoping to build better new ones. So, I mean, surely that's going to be Scunthorpe's benefit. They're not going to be keen to shut Scunthorpe steelworks down if they've got some modern plants, surely. They'd be happy to bring your children up in this town, then. Well, I'm hoping so, yeah. I have no intention of leaving. <laughs> Were you in steel? Uh, what, what, what do you think to this? To this new one? What to? to anchor itself? Well, it's a modern plant, I suppose, to, uh, to keep up with the times, I suppose. That's about what it, what it boils down to, isn't it? Can you see it having any long-term effect on, on, on Scunthorpe? Well, I think it's a good thing, really. I mean, to say it's keeping Scunthorpe on the map, isn't it? There's no doubt about that. I think it's the farthest thing that's ever been done. And in, in future years, of course, they'll extend it better and bigger, because they'll have to. You've got to, you've got to go with progress. You've got to progress with it. No matter which way you look at it, whatever the expense is, you must look forward all the time. And if you don't do that, we're well, going backwards, aren't we? But however important Anchor is to the people of Scunthorpe, it is vital to the country as a whole. Anchor is part of a national plan to boost steel production from 24 to 34 million tonnes, an increase of 40%. But to those in the area, it has a special significance. Well, there's no doubt about it. The, the opinion of, of, the, of the men in Scunthorpe, as particularly the steelers, steel workers in Scunthorpe, are, are fully aware of that if Anchor had not come to Scunthorpe, then the social consequences to Scunthorpe itself would have been disastrous. Scunthorpe, like many places, could look back as well as forward. Brumby Hall, a link with the past, is the design centre for a project concerned solely with the future. On that project rests Scunthorpe's future and Britain's in the highly competitive international world of steelmaking.